Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will. I'm here on the North Shore of Long Island and today's episode is actually very, very special to me for two reasons. One, I got Aaron and Madeline to come up out of Key West to New York. And one of the reasons why I convinced them to come is because we went out uh, spearfishing for striped bass out of Montauk. Um, friend of mine, Tristan, I've been planning it for a long time. We did a lot of coordinating. Him, his dad, Rob, and his friend, Micah, uh, brought us out on their boat out in Montauk and put us on the striper. So big thank you to Tristan. Um, that was huge. You made a dream come true for me because I never thought I would be able to do that or do it. I mean, it's just, it's cold water. It's, it's not an easy thing, especially for someone that learned how to spearfish in Key West. And then to come back up to these waters is very different. Uh, striped bass are also tricky because they are what's called a slot fish or the regulation is slot size, meaning you cannot take a fish smaller than 28 inches or larger than 35 inches. And now that's really tricky underwater to judge. Luckily in the big schools, all of the fish that are about the same size all kind of hang out together. So if you get one that's slot, usually that school is all going to be slot. So that was, that was also a difficult thing to adjust to the cold. The water was 72 degrees. And then when you dove down past the thermocline to the bottom, it was 62 degrees. Doesn't sound like much, but it was cold holding your breath and being underwater. It was, it was difficult. Um, but anyway, I lost a lot of my underwater footage. So if you want to check out some cool underwater footage, go to Aaron's channel, Key West Waterman. Follow Tristan on Instagram, tristan.spears with two S's on the end, or his YouTube, uh, Salty Adventures. He's got nice little clips of him shooting fish. Um, I am going to head to the kitchen to start cooking, and we're going to cook the head and the collar off one of the striped bass. But before that, I'll show you some of the footage from the day. Engine dives. The person and then he, the diver, when they come up, they'll be somewhere back there. They come up, they go back the line, they stay back there where they came up. Next person dives. He makes sure they get back to the line. You just keep an eye visually when they come up. Just make sure they don't come up and they're not like doing anything weird. And just make sure they get back to the line. Then you breathe up and you just move up the line and get ready to drive dive again. All right. If everybody does it. It works great. Tune in the stripes. So well, there you go. We're allowed one per person. So Aaron has his. Tristan has his. I think Madeline is about to come back to the boat with hers. I'm gonna get in the water and give it a shot myself. Uh, and even if not, that's enough meat on that fish to feed. And the collars and the head, oh man, we're gonna have a good cookout. Look at you, babe. <laughs> Sea bass. Sea bass. <laughs> Which I normally don't do. 
I don't have my my serrated knife that I normally have in Key West. Just gonna push that back. Terrible. Mind you, this is the first time I've ever played a striper in my entire life. That was pretty exciting. That meat looks great. Probably one of the most fun days I've ever had diving. Um, we are cleaning the fish. We're back towards my mom's house. You've probably seen a couple of episodes from her house. I usually clean fish in the backyard, but these guys are a little bit bigger than what I normally catch. So this is where we are to take care of some cleaning. And this is our striper. Aaron is taking the filet off that. We're gonna cook up the filet, but as usual, you know, I'm taking the head and the collars and we're gonna make a uh, pasta dish with it. So right now we're gonna clean that up. Um, big thank you to Tristan, his dad Rob, and Captain Micah. Uh, those guys went above and beyond to put us on fish. They drove us all over. I mean, they, they really, it, it was amazing. And it was all through setting it up, talking to Tristan, and he was just pumped to have us. And that went above and beyond anything I could imagine of what we were doing. I thought if we were lucky, maybe we would get one striper between all of us, which the size of these things, that is all you need. So once again, I am very lucky in that I have the Key West Waterman cleaning my fish for me. <laughs> Put it on your tap. <laughs> so with as big as that head and collar are, same thing as the other fish that I get down in Key West, that's gonna be a lot of meat there that is normally on these boats thrown back into the water and not utilized at all. Um, it's not a common thing to really see collars on a menu in New York other than at sushi restaurants. And I am going to do an Italian dish with it just to show you again the versatility of the collar. The meat on the striper is a lot like a tilefish or snapper, but it has the consistency of grouper. It's thick, it's firm, but very light taste. Um, cooked correctly, really juicy and also flaky. Um, it's a versatile fish that is really, really nice to cook with. So we will see you back at the house when we cook. You can see right here, look, that's, that's the spine the spine shot where I hit him. See, this, the spine is actually severed straight through. You got tide coming up behind, <laughs> you might float away. I'm <laughs> uh, That's boat wake from the guy that just zoomed past. So tell me, I mean, I, I do it, but point out in case you anyone's interested this, here. You see this little hinge? It's almost like the shape of a finger. And uh, I, I'm assuming all fish have them. The, only the bigger fish are the ones I take the collars out of, so they're the only ones I've seen, but they should all have them. You come behind it, and then there's another smaller one. You see right there under the knife. You go behind that one. Go down. Separates go. right there. A little bit of skin still stuck. Okay. A tendon. And there. So is that little part? This this part is like bulletproof. <laughs> I normally have my serrated for that. I'm trying to avoid ripping this off and throwing it into the sand underneath me. <laughs> oh my god. Here. Here. That's what you get. Some, so, assembly, some assembly required. So one of the things about taking the head and collar, which I truly believe why a lot of people don't, is this reason right here. They're not that easy to clean. You kind of got to look like a savage pulling them apart. You end a little up barbaric, with... I'm not going to lie end up with bloody hands but the payoff is worth it in spades i mean it's just it's it's 
so so good and again I pointed out every video I will point it out again I mean that that's as big as my face and that's how much meat would have gotten thrown back and discarded and I mean we're we're gonna make pasta for four or five people with this it's unbelievable okay so we're gonna cook the head and the collar um, Aaron took off the fillet we cooked some uh, striper fillets now here's the thing for a fish that you can only keep one of you are allowed one per person I feel like it's really important to make the most of that fish I think it's important to do that with any fish but especially when you only get one so we kept the head and collar And now that is, I'm not salting it. I'm putting it in the oven at 350 degrees as is. That's because it's going into a dish. Now, if I was just eating the collar as is, I would definitely season it. If I was just picking the meat and putting it on top of something, I would definitely season it. But if I'm picking the meat and adding it to another dish that I'm gonna season, I like to just do it as plain as possible. So that's it. Our head and our collar in the oven, 350 degrees. And I'm going to guess about 25 minutes with how big and that collar and head both are. So I'll see you in 25 minutes. I let the uh, striper head go for about 30 minutes. And I uh, took it out and then let it sit for another 30 minutes so that it's cool enough to pick. So let's get to picking. I like any grouper head. You got a big old cheek in there. Whoa! Look at that. And then beyond the cheek, you just have up along the skull right there. Look at that cheek. Through the bottom jaw, a little bit in there. Now that's just off, that's just head meat right there. That's at least two, three tacos. So now we get into the real nitty gritty of the collar, which is an insane amount of meat. Look at that. So in each of these little chambers by the fin here, there's a nice little nugget of meat that's kind of like the uh, kind of like the cheek meat that's inside these pieces of cartilage. Look at that! Look at that! So I can show you on this one kind of what I mean. See how that just popped out? Out of that little chamber. And I mean they stay nice and juicy. You'd be hard pressed to overcook a collar. You'd, you'd have to really try to overcook a collar to overcook a collar. So there you have it. That's how to clean. I mean that, that took no time at all. Yes, adds a little bit of time because you have to cook it then let it cool down to pick it but it's worth it, just plan ahead. I mean, come on, <laughs> that's ridiculous. That's at least two pounds of meat. All right, we're gonna get outside and make our pasta dish. So the pasta that we're gonna do for four hour striper head meat is Sicilian's inspired. 
Now, normally this dish is done with uh, sardines. And all it is is onion, I have garlic, pine nuts, raisins, which I really would have rather golden raisins, but I'm working with what I have. A little bit of the dried oregano from the last episode. I hung it and dried some out. Salt, pepper, butter, and of course, our striper head and collar meat. So we're gonna build the sauce in this pan, including the meat. We're gonna set that aside, and then we're gonna cook the spaghetti, but I'm gonna show you a cool trick with the spaghetti. Let's get cooking. Throw in our olive oil. And now if that looked like a little bit more than usual, that's okay because we're not sauteing vegetables, we're building a sauce. And that olive oil is gonna carry over to coat our uh, spaghetti. Now I like to put my onion in first because that will take longer to sweat than our garlic. Next we do two, uh, two cloves of garlic. A little bit of sea salt to get that going. And now we're not trying to put really any color on this, we're just sweating it out. But if it takes on a little bit of color, that's okay. I really do like caramelized onions, so. Give that a minute to sweat. Now we add in our pine nuts. Now add in our raisins. Really, we're just heating those up. They don't need to cook at all. Add in my butter. I'm going to add in my oregano now so that the flavor of it carries through all of our oil and butter. And that is going to coat the fish. Now our fish is already cooked. This dish traditionally you would be cooking the fish in this pot. But because of the way we did it, what I'm going to do here in a moment, a little bit of pepper. That oregano is so fragrant. It's so, so fragrant. It hits the pan. And I mean, between the garlic and then the sweetness of those raisins. All right, butter is melted down. Now I'm going to shut off my heat and add our striper. Add just a little bit more olive oil to that. And because we didn't salt that striper when it went into the oven, I am now going to salt it just a little bit. That smells absolutely divine. Oh yes. Okay, now we put this aside. Now for our pasta, I have about half the water that I would normally use inside heating up. And this is the trick to pasta. So this is an old tradition. This is red wine. Now you could use a bottle, you know, a kind of crummy bottle because you don't want to be pouring $60 into a pan to cook pasta. But what it does, it gives a very, very unique flavor to the pasta. And it actually adds acid. So when the pasta cooks, it takes on a little bit of a different consistency that's really beautiful, especially when you're not saucing the pasta and you want the pasta to stand out. Because with this, we're not gonna go crazy with sauce. When I throw the pasta in, I'm gonna throw in a little more butter to help coat it, mix it around with everything, and that's it. And it's gonna be 
really the flavor of the pasta and the flavor of the fish and the pine nuts and everything else that's gonna carry through. So we'll let this come up to a boil and then dump our pasta in. Okay, now we're gonna cook the pasta until it's al dente. And for those of you not familiar with that term, it means it's a little bit just before completely cooked through so that it has a little bit of a bite to it. Al dente uh, means by the tooth, means crunchy. Uh, the reason why we're gonna leave it a little bit more than al dente is because we're gonna pull this once it's ready we're gonna pull it from the pot and then throw it into our pan here and finish cooking the pasta in our pan while we're making the sauce. And we're gonna throw some of this water because the pasta is gonna release a bunch of its starch. So we're gonna grab some of this water, throw it over here, and that'll help create a sauce to coat the pasta. Give a little bit of a try with the pasta. Perfect. Mmm. The red wine gives it a little bit of acidity. It's really nice. So I'm going to turn down my heat. Move my pasta off. fish back on. Add just a bit more butter. And now add my pasta to my fish. Now if you did that pasta with say two bottles of wine and no water, it would actually take on a really beautiful deep purple color. Something to get some of that liquid over. Like I said, that liquid has starch in it. So that starch is gonna thicken up and help everything get coated. Okay, let's dig in. The fish is still moist. Didn't dry out at all. That's because we use that head meat and the collar meat. The pasta has that little bit, it almost tastes like a citrus from the, uh, from the red wine. The pine nuts are earthy, and then the little bit of sweetness from the raisins. And that oregano marries everything together. So if you're a sauce person, probably not the dish for you. <laughs> But if you're someone that likes pasta, likes ingredients up front, 
likes to be able to taste everything on the plate, this is a banger dish. And you could do this with grouper head, really any fish head at all. You could do this with regular fish. Now the traditional way in the Sicilian culture, they put uh, toasted breadcrumbs on top. It doesn't need it, just for uh, texture. But this doesn't need it. It doesn't need any lemon. If I had two bottles of wine, I would have done two bottles of wine because I would have loved to have had my pasta have that really vibrant purple color. It's a little muted mauve color now, but. Mm. Doesn't take away from the taste, holy moly. Well, all right. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the episode, hit like, comment below what you think of the dish. You guys have been telling me a lot that I've inspired you to use the heads and collars. I love getting those messages. I love getting the pictures of the stuff that you guys are cooking. It's amazing. I think it is really, really important to be a conscientious, sustainable cook. Use everything. If you're out there hunting fish, hunting whatever animal, use everything. Use the whole animal. All right. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next one.